is Kelly and Rich. Today we are doing some more work on our bathroom. And we are trying to cover up an unsightly mess that we made on the end wall. With some clever storage. I also got sunburn. I have that to 50 odd. <laughs> We hope you enjoy. <laughs> so last week you would have seen us finishing up seeing in the shower. What I'm going to do today is think about how we can seal up the front of the toilet. And we're going to be using a tambourine door to do that. But of course it doesn't quite fit and I'm going to need to trim it down first. The idea being here, it's going to come down over the front of the shower and almost seal it off whilst we're using it. So in the kit you get a tambour door, We've gone for a white gloss one, the track to go on the side and these spirals for it to sit in. And what I'm gonna need to do is figure out how it can be mounted in here. That's the wrong one. Be mounted in here like this and then encapsulate it to make sure it's all watertight and waterproof. Um, and the first thing I need to do because the depth along here is 59, up here it's 59 and a half is just carefully cut down each side. Naturally, it's tricky. Dave's here now. Do you think it's going to work? Yeah. <laughs> Two chances. Yeah, I like those odds. The track for the outside wall was fitted first, and I drew a line perpendicular to it on the opposite side and fitted that track with some VHB tape before siliconing down the back. Saturday morning, and it is miserable out here. Um, but basically we allowed the VHP tape and we've siliconed the tracks down the side to set overnight. The spirals were then added with VHP tape for a temporary fit. You can see me in the time lapse testing it. I do need to make a modification to the flat on our um, toilet because I've noticed it does foul on it. But it's one that we can solve. I've taped this up now, ready to be um, silicone and sealed in later. But before I do that, I'm going to make a lid to go on top of here, a sort of shelf, an angled shelf. So I've just measured the width. I'm going to cut that first out of plywood. And I'm going to make it so it's got a small lip that comes down on top of here that we can then seal it against the wall and then clad <laughs> in this sandy clad. Despite the weather, I cracked on using the plunge saw to cut a five degree angle down the back, popping in and out of the van periodically to make sure it fitted. I drew along the front edge, took it back, sliced it up, and then it was all joined together with screws. At that point, I could see that it fitted, so I varnished it with three coats of varnish, just the stuff I had knocking about, let that go dry, and then in the van it went. I was going to fit it up with pocket holes as you can see here but then Dave gave me a great idea to screw it through from the back. That way in the future I can remove it if needs be. It was then masticed up with Puraflex 40 and iced over like a cake and then we installed some sani clad over the top of it. Next thing we have to do here is silicone it up using sanitary sealant on there where it's flexible because it stays nice and white and won't go mouldy. The next thing I want to do is finish the shower and the end walls. So to get the shower in place, I just need to install my thermostatic mixer on the back. Didn't think it would be full of that much water, I must admit. It's gone everywhere. It would have been refreshing if it wasn't quite so smelly. Just screwed that in and then added the threaded adapters with some PTFT tape so they're coming through the wall. And that means the back wall now um, is ready to reinstall. So the shower that we've got is not uncommon, it's just a Myra shower from Screwfix. And it comes with some sort of vanity concealing plates. And they're like three and a half centimeters deep which are too long for my um, valves and will bring, it'll just bring it, like even if I extend those, which I could, that is an option, it's gonna bring it out far too much into the shower room, which I don't want. So I come up with a crazy idea of taping up the plastic shower concealing valve thingies and cutting them with a hacksaw. 
because what could possibly go wrong there? I've marked them up. I need to take about one and a half centimeters off of each, cut them with a hacksaw, and I'm installing them here. And actually that's worked out fine. The mixer is on. I'm just gonna attach the hose so I can pressure test the system to make sure I haven't got any leaks. I'm just gonna shove it out the window for the time being and get a load of towels just in case it goes wrong. Um, straightforward enough. You just pop the valve on the bottom here. I need to put the caps on the end. I can blam out the window and pressurize the system and see what we get. I have tested it, got a slight leak. So where it goes in from copper to copper, I obviously haven't put enough PTFT tape on there. So I've just been given a tip actually by a good friend of mine to make sure I clean the threads off first. So I'm gonna do that with a bit of alcohol and then do it again. So I'm just gonna take it all apart then we can actually give it a bit of a test. Oh God. Happy to report the leak is fixed. We've just run quite a lot of water through here. I'm just double checking, it's all pressurized at the moment. So it's gonna be a good chance to keep an eye on it. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna install the riser bar here. I'm gonna off center it to run up the pillar I've got in behind my wall. I'm thinking then when the shower head's on there, it'll be in the center. So although the bar's off center, this will be in the center, is my thinking. Not, I haven't done this before in my life. Oh, that's lovely. That's really good. And that's nice. Then, and the leak stopped, so that's good. I fixed it. The end wall is going to house some clever built-in storage in the studs. And we also wanted to include a hatch just in case the shower leaked. Now, this does look a bit drastic, but we've come up with an idea a little bit later on of how we're gonna conceal this. All right, so what we've got here is the end panel. Obviously it needs some finishing and we need the corner beads to go on, but we're gonna have access pa panel there. I just need to oil that guy, get that in there. In here, we're just waiting for this to dry. Silicone up next. But that is how we have got up to, at this point from Friday, a little bit of Saturday and a little bit of Sunday. We just take a long time to do anything. A little bit of tidying up to do in here as well down this edge, just so it looks good when it opens. But hopefully that's gonna be watertight. And then I've got a bit of towel storage to install up here and a few other finishing touches so it doesn't look like a big white box. Hello. It's in the week. So in the evenings, in the week, I'm trying to get out and do a few odd jobs because we are desperate to get away in the van again uh, to try out everything that we've got and actually use it for some travel, which is a, will be a novel idea. Um, what am I here to do? So this cable here is going to feed our lights and I have opted for LED strip light, so it's IP65 strip light. I'm actually gonna put it in some IP65 profile trim because it seals it all off. So not only is the LED strip waterproof, so is the profile that it's going in. Um, and because this is 12 volt, we'll be fine in here. This was a little bit fiddly to install. But once it had been, I can install the light switch and this was the result. It's Saturday morning now, following Saturday second weekend of this part of this video. I've got a small towel rail to go up here. It is small. It's just gonna be basically a place where we can hang and dry a few bits and bobs and obviously store our towels. So it's going up here. I'm just gonna mask up and then install this with a couple of screws. But I have been agonizing over it. You know, when you buy something and you're like, oh, I'm not sure if it's quite right but I think this will work. Just basically move it to there and then put the top one in and then the bottom one in with that. Take it. This is secured just with a couple of brackets and then an Allen key. Okay, so we've built some storage in here and this is the access hatch, access hatch for shower in case we need to access it for any reason. But it doesn't look very nice to look at so we thought we would make 
a slide in out mirror so the mirror will hide the storage behind and it will also hide the access hatch. The first thing we did was measure up and then we decided to use an off-curl 15mm birch to make the back of our mirror. The next thing we did was measure up a shelf to go across and then marked up where holes needed to be drilled out to secure this shelf as well as the pegs that we were going to put underneath it. I'm going to drill it through from the front to this depth and then the pegs should fit in and then what we're going to do is pop the pegs in and drill them through from the back of the pilot hole and screw them through, screw and glue them is the idea. The drill bit depth was marked with tape, we very carefully made sure we didn't go all the way through before sanding up and then using wood glue in each of the holes. So we wanted to screw and glue it because these pegs are obviously going to be for hanging things on, not very heavy things but all the same. You know what things are like. You don't want it going all wonky donkey. Then it was time to add the sliders. We've opted for heavy duty soft close sliders because when they are closed, they're very difficult to open by accident. So when we're driving along, we shouldn't need anything to keep it closed. But if we do, we will update it. So the sliders were added and then I checked that it worked before retiring to the back garden to Osmo Oil the wood both back and front just to make sure that it's kept all nice because we're going to be touching this thing obviously more than a normal mirror ever would be and here it is didn't take us too long did it either as we've been out and about today as well so we've got the mirror little shelf and then my little mushroom hookies for hanging things on cookies for stuff access point in case anything goes wrong The shower's in, we've got that in, the toilet is sealed off and a bit of storage done. We're just waiting now for the shower door to come and then we can demonstrate that, can't we? Yeah. Uh, we hope you're well and we will see you soon. One, two, three. Bye! Bye.